everyone. Welcome to our Spring 22 College to Career Bootcamp event. We are glad you're all joining us here today to hopefully um, gather some information, learn some tips and strategies on how to um, leverage your transition as you all are likely either recent grads or soon to be grads. Um, and we hope to share some uh, useful information with you all. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Give me just a moment to put in the slide view. So again, you are joining us for the 2022 College to Career Bootcamp event. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce myself and then let um, my co-host introduce herself as well. My name is Sandra De Leon. I'm the Career Counselor for Diverse Students and one of your co-hosts for today. I'm gonna go ahead and let Carrie introduce herself. Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Carrie McKnight. I'm one of the career counselors in the Career Center and I work with graduate students and alumni. Again, thank you for joining us and congratulations to our new grads. And I'll turn it back to Sandra. Thank you, Carrie. Um, so just a few Zoom guidelines I wanna go over. Um, please make sure to complete the Google form in the chat to help us track attendance. I know you all registered through Handshake, but you know, we always um, tend to see sometimes a difference from registration versus those that attended. So if you can please complete the Google form, it's super quick and it also helps us to kind of follow up with you and share any other resources. Um, we do ask that all attendees audio and video um, be muted. Um, so please make sure that's um, taken care of on your end. Uh, during the employer breakout sessions, you're obviously welcome to and meet yourself and ask questions to that employer or um, representative. Um, we ask that you type your questions for our keynote in the chat and um, our moderator will read them out loud. Um, I do wanna just kind of point out that in the event that we do have a lot of questions, we will try to get to your question, but we will primarily try to kind of ask questions from different um, topics or what we see um, attendees are asking more about. Um, so I also want to introduce um, uh, Kristen Keller, who will um, be moderating our chat. She's one of our career counselors at the Career Center. So Kristen is posting the um, Google check-in form, sign-in form that Sandra mentioned, and she and I will be um, moderating the Q&A a little bit later after our keynote presentation. Thanks. Thank you, Carrie, for that. Um, and then here quickly, just want to review the agenda for today. Um, we will be doing a quick introduction of our keynote speaker, um, who is Jeremy uh, Scheifling, and then we will be doing um, the audience Q&A from 12.40 to 12.50 p.m., followed by our breakout room instructions and employer um, introductions as well. Um, that will be from 12.50 to 1 p.m., and then from 1 p.m. to 1.55 p.m., we will have the actual employer and career center breakout sessions. And then I'll go over more information or carry well regarding uh, those breakout sessions. And then finally, the last five minutes will be our closing and um, us sharing our survey to get feedback from you all. Um, and now I am glad to introduce our keynote speaker for today's event, uh, Jeremy. I am not gonna read uh, the bio here, but you're welcome to kind of review it. I will let Jeremy introduce himself to you all. Um, I do wanna quickly just mention that uh, Jeremy recently uh, released a book called Linked, um, and he has kindly um, provided access to a digital copy of his um, latest release. And we will be sharing that towards the end of the event. So please stay tuned for that as it provides great um, tips and strategies on how to leverage LinkedIn to get your dream job. And so we ask that you stay tuned for the uh, link to the digital copy as well as the password. So I'm gonna pass it over to Jeremy so that he can introduce himself. Thank you so much, Sandra. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you all. And as Sandra mentioned, you know, um, it's very tempting in this age of Zoom to say, hey, I know this is being recorded. I'll come back later. Or I'll just jump off right now. Please avoid that temptation because you will get bonus goodies only if you stick around till the end, including free copy of my book. So please, please, please stick around. And that being said, if you haven't done so already, please give some love to Sandra, to Carrie, to Anita from the Career Center uh, in the chat for making this session possible. You know, a lot of times when you're a student, you're really focused on, oh my goodness, it is so hard to get all the way to the graduation stage. 
but it's also really important to take a moment to thank the folks who helped you get there and beyond. So again, if you haven't done so already, go over to the Zoom chat and send your favorite emoji to Sandra, to Carrie, to the whole career team for making this session possible. Maybe a little raise the roof, maybe some smiley faces, just give a little love to the team that's brought you to the session and everything else. And thanks to Melissa, to Sabelle, to Nikki for sharing those kind appreciations. And then just to give you a little bit of, of information about myself, you know, I've got to say, I've had a really lucky career myself. I've gone from being a kindergarten teacher all the way to working at every cool tech company across Silicon Valley. But the one place that really changed the course of my career was getting to work inside LinkedIn, specifically on our education team, working with students and alumni to take advantage of that tool. Because what I learned inside LinkedIn was how to crack the code of the hiring process. And I've got to tell you all, as an undergrad or even a grad student, I was totally clueless about how the hiring process worked. And getting a chance to work at LinkedIn was like shining a flashlight into the black box of the hiring process to really understand for the first time how it all worked. And I've been on a mission for the last decade to share those secrets with students around the world and to help them land jobs that they love themselves. And so what I wanna focus on today is I wanna start out this session not with inspiration, not with, hey, follow your dreams or do what you love, but with three really practical steps to take you from where you are today to where you wanna be as fast as possible. And that includes finding your North Star to knowing where you belong, optimizing your applications. So when you apply for jobs, you're not getting those, thank you for applying, we'll get back to you messages. Instead you're getting, hey, you look awesome, let's have an interview. And then finally, how to give yourself an edge compared to every other applicant from Stanford to Berkeley and beyond. I want you to crush the competition and get access to the jobs you love. And so to do that, I'm gonna focus on these three steps, but I'm not gonna do it in a theoretical format. I'm not just gonna sort of talk blah, blah, blah about the high level stuff. Instead, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step with the support of your amazing classmate, Liz Villarreal, who's gonna be our incredible career guinea pig today. So Liz, if you wouldn't mind unmuting your line, I would love for you to introduce yourself. Just tell us a little bit about what you're studying at San Jose State and then what you wanna be doing career-wise when you graduate. Yeah, so I'm a film student at San Jose State. I'm actually graduating next year in the spring. And what I'm pursuing is sound editing in animation films. So my dream job is to hopefully work in Pixar <clears throat> or DreamWorks. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm, it's a little bit about me. I love that. And I have to tell you, I actually have someone that I mentored when I worked at LinkedIn who got into the animation industry mm -hmm. all through the power of networking. Mm -hmm. And so I believe you can absolutely get there yourself, Liz, taking advantage of these uh, steps. But now let me ask you a first question. Let's get started. Liz, are you sure that this is the right path for you? And if so, yeah. how do you know? I'm pretty confident. I went to, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I went to a community college and I experimented with different uh, classes and I realized that I didn't want to do any of the STEM field related careers. It was too difficult. So then um, I always kind of knew I wanted to be in the film industry. And then when I started taking courses at San Jose State, it kind of confirmed it to me that it's what I want to do. Okay. I love that. So like you've been there, you've tried a lot of stuff, you've crossed off the things that didn't make sense. And now by process of elimination, you know where you belong. Yeah. But let me ask you this big question, Liz. Do you know what it feels like to be a sound editor, not in an academic sense, but in terms of working at Pixar or working at Disney? Not at all. <laughs> okay. How would you like to know? How would you like to have x-ray vision into that job so you can actually see what it feels like? An internship, firsthand experience. Okay. Let's make it happen. Let's do it even before you have the internship. So check this out. One of the very best things about being a grad of San Jose State or even being a student is that you have access to this incredible alumni group. So if you go into LinkedIn, and I encourage everyone to follow along with me and come to the San Jose State page on LinkedIn, what you're gonna discover, Liz, is that you've got literally hundreds of thousands of Spartans who've gone down this path. 279,000, my last count. How would you like to learn from the folks on the inside what this job feels like. Yeah, I would want to network with them. They probably okay. know. Mm -hmm. Cool. 
And by the way, I'm an introvert by training. I don't know mm-hmm. about you, Liz. Maybe you're an extrovert or introvert. Mm-hmm. I hate the idea of reaching out cold to someone that I don't know. How does that feel to you? I agree. I don't want them to think I'm like desperate or trying to use them. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's like so awkward, you know, they're older, I'm younger. There's a weird power dynamic. How do I make sure that I get over that? Well, let me show you a foolproof process that even shy people like myself can use to break on through. So the first thing I want everyone to do out there is please bookmark this page that I put in the chat because it's all free. And basically for the rest of your career, no matter where you go, you're gonna have more than a quarter million Spartans to support you. This massive army waiting to help you out at every stage. And the trick is to find the folks who are the best fit. So let's start with sound editing. And we're gonna put that into um, uh, quotations just like you would do on Google. And check this out, Liz. We just went from 300,000 Spartans to just over 100 based on the folks who are doing the exact things you want. Now check out where they are. Some are at Apple, some are in independent film, Music Factory, Google. Are any of these areas exciting for you? Any of these companies? What do you think? Most of them are tech companies. I would hope to do like related to film. Ah, okay. So maybe we say, let's focus on the LA area. How does that sound? Yeah, that sounds good. You know, entertainment capital of the world. Mm-hmm. And now we've got that focus, right? Music factory, levels audio, <clears throat> color vision, real vision, et cetera. Walt Disney Studios. Why don't we click that one, right? Mm-hmm. And dun, 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 dun. we now have someone on the inside over at Disney who graduated from San Jose State just six years ago. So here's Julia, someone we can learn from. If you want to learn from Julia's experience on the inside at Disney, the mouse house itself, how would you go about reaching out to her, Liz? What would you do? I would start by messaging her yeah. and then asking her if we could connect. Yeah. And really walk me through it. Like, treat me like your personal secretary. Tell me exactly what you'll say, and I'll, I'll type it on the screen. Okay. Um, I would say, like, hi, Julia. I'm Liz, and I'm a student at San Jose State University. I noticed that your LinkedIn profile mentioned that you work at Disney. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if we could connect and if I could receive some advice how to get there. Yeah, I love that. And so why did you start with, I'm a current San Jose State student? Why was that your first sentence? Um, Because they used to go to San Jose State, so they probably know firsthand how it was being a college student. Exactly, right. You know, Julia was literally in your shoes five years ago, right? Mm -hmm. She knows how anxiety provoking it is to go from academia into the industry and how sort of scary it can be to make that leap. So she's been there. She gets it. So that's a great place to start. Now, Liz, why did you not say, hey, Julia, I want to work at Disney. Give me a job. I think it's a little disrespectful. I don't know. Totally. Too front in your face. I don't know. (laughs) No, 100%. I love the fact that you trusted your instincts. You said, hey, even though Julia is a Spartan, Julia is still a human being. She doesn't want to be used. She doesn't want to be transacted with. She wants someone to respect her and develop rapport first. So what's a better approach than asking for a job? What should you ask for instead? I would probably just ask for advice. That's the best thing to do. Yeah. And are you going to ask for like a whole hour of her time tomorrow? Probably start off by like emailing. And then if she's comfortable enough, I would want to schedule like a small little Zoom session with her. Yeah. Yeah. Even 10 minutes over Zoom, right? Just to Mm -hmm. get your foot in the door. And I love that because look at this. In just three sentences, you went from being a total stranger to a total member of the same tribe. Instead of transacting with her, you built a relationship with her. And then instead of asking for way too much, You asked for just the right amount, the Goldilocks perfect version of just getting your foot in the door. I love that, Liz. Now we've got the big question for you. Julia says, you know what? I'm really busy. Things are going crazy at Disney right now, but I've got 10 minutes for a fellow Spartan. I'd be happy to share my experience. What are you going to ask Julia in those 10 minutes, Liz, to find out what it's like to be a sound editor on the inside? I would probably ask her like the work environment and how she got there and what I need to do in order to get there in that position in a couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. You're trying to figure out what does it feel like to be on the inside? How do you get into the inside? And then let me ask you a big question, Liz. When you think about what you love to do, like if you close your eyes and think about 
these were the best things I ever did in my life, my internships, my career. What are those kinds of things? What do you love to do? I guess I honestly like working with other people. I think film includes a lot of collaborating. And if you don't take other people's consideration into it, um, your work might not translate the same way and achieve like the director's overall visionary goal. I love that. All about collaboration. And then by the same token, what's your kryptonite? Like, what do you hate to do that just drives you crazy? Hmm. Uh, I think, honestly, working with stubborn people. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what I hate the most. I've dealt with that a lot with my yeah. film experience. So now, imagine what Julia shares with you. Imagine two different scenarios. Scenario one, Julia says, you know, Liz, I'm so glad you reached out because the reason I love my job so much is it's all about teamwork. I'm working with incredible animators, incredible directors, building an incredible project together through the power of all of us sharing our ideas. When she says that, what are you thinking in your head, Liz? I'm thinking, I kind of envisioned that, I guess. Um, I would expect that from sound editing. Yeah, you're like, ding, ding, ding. Think about that Venn diagram, right? The things that you are awesome at and the things the job needs are exactly overlapping. That is the perfect position for you. But now imagine scenario two. What if Julia says, well, the reason I love sound editing is that I go into my own little sound editing cubby and I do all my work independently. And then occasionally a really annoying stubborn person asks for something and I kind of push them off and I say, get out of here. Now, what are you thinking? I have to prepare ahead of time and see what's coming. And I, I'm kind of aware that this is going to happen, but I have to find a way to deal with it because it's at the end of the day, it's what I enjoy doing. Yeah. Or maybe it's even, it's not the exact right fit. Maybe there's another role somewhere else in the development process, the production process. It would be even a better fit for your skill set, right? Mm -hmm. And so the trick is you have worked so hard to go from community college to San Jose State all the way almost to graduation to just go down a road that's right for someone else, but not for you, right? Yeah. So here's my call out to you and all of your classmates, everyone across Spartan Nation. You all have worked so hard to get here, do not settle. Do your homework, do your research, find the perfect path, and only then do you dive in with your whole heart and your whole soul. So thank you for demonstrating that, Liz. You were awesome. Thank you. Okay. And by the way, if there are any questions about this, if you're like, hey, how would I do this if I'm looking for jobs in the Bay Area or the tech industry? Feel free to ask those questions in the chat and we're happy to stop and address those. But again, the most critical first step is you've got to start with your North Star. If you just dive in willy-nilly, chances are three years from now, you're looking for a new job because you're not satisfied with the one you got. Whereas if you did what Liz just demonstrated, which is doing your homework, making sure that you know you belong there, then you're going to be so much more successful every step along the way. So that's step number one. Now, Liz, when it comes time to apply for these sound editing jobs, assuming it's the perfect fit, do you mind if I look at your LinkedIn application or your LinkedIn profile, excuse me, as a way of getting sense of what you're applying with, the kind of story you're telling to recruiters? Is yeah, that okay if I pull that up? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to pull that up. And by the way, if everyone could send a little love Liz's way in the chat, I know we did the same for Sandra and Carrie and Anita, but Liz is being super brave today, putting herself out there in front of all of her classmates. So again, send your 100 emojis, your star eye emojis, whatever you want, Liz's way, because this takes a lot of guts. Yeah, Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Mohammed. Okay. So here's Lizeth's profile. And ideally your profile and your resume are pretty similar because you're taking all those great bullet points, all those great talking points and putting them in here. Now, if I were to ask you, Lizeth, how do recruiters at Disney, at Pixar, at Warner Brothers evaluate your profile? How do you think they go about looking for what's really a good fit between their job and the candidate? What are they looking for? I think they're looking for my experience and my work. So like my portfolio. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll be honest, before a human recruiter looks at anything on your profile or your resume, who looks at it first? Do you have a sense? I do not. 
So this is kind of scary, but don't be freaked out. They actually have technology scan at first. And here's the reality. So I work at Khan Academy today. Khan Academy is this company that everyone wants to work at because it's a nonprofit, it's doing good in the world. And for every job we post, we have a thousand or more applicants. So we don't have the time to read them all ourselves. And the first thing we do is we apply our algorithm to screen those resumes, screen those LinkedIn profiles, see is this profile even worth looking at with our human eyes? And so based on that algorithmic sort of take, what do you think the, uh, the technology is looking for, Liz? How does it know if, it's your, if you're a good fit or not? Oh, probably certain keywords. There's exactly. something specifically they're looking for. And do you happen to know off the top of your head, Liz, what are the most important keywords for a sound editor job? Probably mix, um, uploading, organized. Yeah, those are like the top three, I would say. <laughs> cool, cool. We got to say, Randy loves your profile. Muhammad says, maybe check the skill section. But what if I told you, Liz, there is somewhere on LinkedIn where recruiters are just giving you the keywords, basically on a silver platter. Where do you think that might be? I actually don't know. Where is it? So Johnny and Stacy nailed it, which is the job description. And this mm -hmm. is kind of ironic because as a job seeker myself, I hate job descriptions. You know, they're so vague, they're so wordy. But sure enough, if you were to look for a sound editor job right over here on LinkedIn, what you're going to discover once you search for jobs is that in every one of these descriptions, there are those keywords you were talking about. And sure enough, there are those things like team environment, internal clients, interpersonal skills, right? Digital editing, Adobe Audition, Zeta, Galaxy. I don't even know what these things are, Liz, but you probably do. And those are the things that must be on your profile because that's what the algorithm is going to look for. So Liz, as a thank you for being an amazing volunteer today, how would you like a custom list of your own most important keywords? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. So again, another free site for you called jobscan.co. Everyone feel free to bookmark this. And the way that JobScan works is that it basically takes all the keywords that are in your profile and it matches it to the keywords in the jobs that you want. So let me grab this one first and foremost. I'm going to grab all the keywords from top to bottom. And I'm going to paste them in here. And then I'm going to compare them side by side with all the keywords that currently exist in Liz's profile. So Liz, are you ready for the moment of truth here? Yes. Okay, digital drum roll, please. And as they say on Family Feud, survey says a 26% match rate. Now I know what you're thinking, Liz. You're like, oh my goodness, I just spent you know, four years at San Jose State. Um, why am I only at 26%? But fear not, I've got your back. So here's what JobScan says. First of all, it pulls things right out of the job description, the most important keywords, and then it compares how often they appear on your profile. So sure enough, audio is critical for sound editing, and you've nailed that. Same for sound editing itself. But then there are things like Adobe Audition or technical skills or web analytics. So question for you, Liz, have you ever done anything with Adobe tools or customer service or PowerPoint? or analytics? I have. Okay, give me an example of just one of those skills that you've employed at some point in your past. Uh, well, at least with customer service at the Career Center, I work at the front desk. Yeah. So it's something I've been doing for almost two years. Oh, I love that. And give me an example of a bullet point you could use that would incorporate the keyword customer service. Probably right there where it says like provided outstanding service, I would probably include customer service. Exactly. And is that rocket science? Like trying to sort of fit in that <laughs> keyword? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it might seem fancy, but it's really not, right? It's like basic matching. Can I take the things that recruiters want from me and just feed it right back in my resume and my LinkedIn profile? And so what I want every single person to do out there is to use tools like JobScan or your career counselors at San Jose State to make sure that you are nailing these keywords in your most important documents. And so Liz, as a little parting gift for our career game show today, I'm gonna to send you a little bit of extra homework for the summertime. How does that sound? Okay. <laughs> I know no Spartan wants more homework over the summer, but this mm -hmm. is probably the most important homework you'll ever do 
because it's the difference between being filtered out by the algorithm and being filtered in. And that's where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And so bottom line, when it comes to optimizing your application, don't overthink it. It's not some kind of fancy AI that's trying to crush your dreams like the AI in Terminator. Instead, it's all about, do you just match the basic keywords out of the job description? And if you do, you're off to the races. Okay. Um, and a great question is coming in from Randy and others. Absolutely. You have this amazing team over at the Career Center. You've got Sandra, you've got Kristen, you've got Carrie, you've got Anita, all these folks who want to make sure that your profile and resume are ready for prime time. So please, please, please take advantage of that support. You've got the best in the business ready to go to bat for you. Okay. Shail says, what's a good percentage to have when job scan compares your LinkedIn versus the job description? What do you think there, Liz? If you had to guess, what do you think is a, a good percentage to shoot for, for Shia? At least passing, so I'd say higher than 70%. Higher than 70%. So I'm gonna tell you something interesting. This is straight from the data, which is um, people often think that when they're looking at job descriptions, that if they don't match 100% of all the bullet points, they should not bother applying. But the truth is, and this is really kind of crazy, recruiters often have an internal benchmark of about 50%. And so if you match even 50% of the keywords, you should probably apply for that job. In fact, if you match all 100%, you're probably overqualified and you should push yourself a little harder out there. So please, 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 Shail, do not hold back and say, I've got to be 100% matching. Instead, if you're even halfway there, go for it. Great question. Okay. Manal's got a question. Manal, feel free to unmute your line. Ask that yeah. question live. Uh, so uh, if in uh, when we are che checking through the job scan uh, and the, it says, for example, here, the keyword uh, sports was yeah. uh, in job description, uh, they used six times. Yeah. And in our resume, it's like only once. So should we like, uh, we use, we have to use six times the sports uh, in our resume. Well, uh, such a good knowledge. question, Manal. I love that. So here's the good news. You don't have to have it six times, but there is an advantage to having keyword density. So when the LinkedIn algorithm or the resume screening algorithm is looking at your resume, it does want to see that you're not just mentioning something once, but multiple times. So I would encourage Manal and Liz and everyone today if you have a couple of keywords that are critical to your search, don't just have them one place, have them multiple places. Great question, Manal. Uh, so uh, it should be like the exact number which the job description uses or, or it should be, how is it? Because I have yeah. seen that uh, they, people say like 80% of the, uh, you said 50%, but somewhere I read like 80% should be a good match. Uh, yeah, so yeah. how is it? Great question. So it doesn't have to be six because again, the algorithm is not engineered to be precise that way. It's not saying, hey, if you only have five matches, you're out. Instead, what it's really focused on is two things. Number one, do you have the skill at all? And then number two, do you have the skill multiple times, like two or three times as a demonstration of the fact that you're really deep in that skill, not just at the surface level. So don't worry about six but do try to get your most important keywords in there a couple of times. Okay, Manal? Thank you so much. Awesome question, I love that. Um, and I think that does it for questions at this point. Although I think Randy was saying, how did you get to where you are today? What are some obstacles and challenges you faced? Randy, let me hold that question to the end because I think that would be a good one to close on. For now, let's keep moving to our final section here, which is all about how do you earn an edge? Now back to you, Liz. Liz, when you were applying for these sound editing jobs, especially at Disney, especially at Pixar, how many people do you think are also applying for those same jobs? Probably like for sure more than 10, maybe exactly. 100. And I will tell you that the average job in America has 250 applicants. And remember that's the average job for companies you've never heard of. So how many do you think it is for a Pixar, which is the very best in the industry? Probably like over 500. <laughs> exactly, 500, 1,000 or more. A lot of times it's harder to get a job at these companies than to get a seat at Harvard. So I tell you that not to freak you out, 
But to emphasize this final point, which is even if you know where you belong, even if you've optimized your keywords, you still don't want to rest on your laurels. You want to go one step further to have an advantage compared to everyone else out there because there are so many other folks. So imagine that you are a recruiter at Disney or at Pixar, Liz. What would make me especially excited about you as a candidate compared to someone who's just generically good? What do you think? At least knowing them beforehand, having some sort of network with them. Oh, Liz, you should have been a psychologist because <laughs> you understand human nature, which is even with all this technology, it's not just about algorithms and keywords and all that. It's about, do I know you? Do I trust you? Can I count on you? And so question for you is, do you know a lot of people at Pixar? I do not. Okay. If you want to have someone at Pixar go to bat for you, how do you think you could do that? What could you do? Um, I would probably try to see who works there and reach out to them. Exactly. And so we're going to talk about this idea of getting a referral. Um, you work at the Career Center, so you probably know this pretty well. What, how much does having a referral increase your odds of getting hired? Do you happen to know, Liz? I do not know the percentage. So it turns out that it's about 10x. So your average chance of getting a job in America is less than 1% if you only apply online but you boost that 10 times just by having someone on the inside say, hey, Liz is awesome, give her a shot. So if we go over to Pixar's page over here, we're gonna discover that Pixar has about 3000 employees and they're all listed on LinkedIn, which is really nice. So um, Liz, if you want to reach out to someone at Pixar who might be able to advocate for you internally, get you that referral, who's the lowest hanging fruit? Who's the easiest person to reach out to? Mm -hmm. I would say like an, someone that was probably an alumni at San Jose State. Absolutely. So you come over here, say all filters, you say, show me someone who went to the greatest school in the world. You plug that in, go Spartans. You say, show results. And sure enough, there are almost 30 Pixar folks who also came right from where you are today. And so you could reach out the way we were talking about before, right? hey, I'm a fellow Spartan, I would love to pick your brain. And all of a sudden you're opening up a conversation, giving a chance to get your foot in the door. But actually, I gotta be honest with you, Liz. I am probably the laziest job seeker in the history of recruiting. What's even easier than going to an alum and trying to build a relationship from scratch? I don't know, honestly, probably, I don't know. I would probably just go with the people within the same field as me. Yeah, so what, what have we said? Let's just look at for people that we already know, people on the inside. So first degree connections, as LinkedIn says. Say, okay, we don't know anyone directly, that's no problem. But what about this idea of second degree? Any idea what that means? I don't. Okay, so second degree is kind of like that old game, six degrees of Kevin Bacon, which is we're all linked together through these invisible chains. I know Liz and Liz knows Carrie and Carrie knows X, Y, Z. And so, Second degree is basically a friend of a friend, someone I know who knows someone on the inside. And so check this out. Natalie is a technical recruiter there. Her job is to find awesome people like Liz. So what do you think, Liz? Should we reach out to Natalie directly or is there a better way? I would start off by reaching out to her. Okay, so we could definitely do that. And that's called cold outreach. The problem we call it cold though is it's kind of like coming in from the Arctic trying to build a relationship from scratch. And that's tough to do. Is there a way potentially to warm it up, to microwave this relationship, if you will? What do I you wouldn't think? know. Okay, so I think Stacy is onto it in the chat, which is the mutual connection. So I happen to know Barry directly, even though I don't know Natalie. What can I do with Barry, Liz? How could he help? Maybe ask him if there's a way where you guys could mutually all meet together. Exactly, yeah. It's kind of almost like a blind date, right? Barry knows Natalie, Barry knows me. I don't know Natalie yet, but Barry can facilitate an introduction. He can say, Natalie, you and I have worked together for so long and you have to know Liz. Liz is amazing. She's gonna rock your world. Now, what do you think the chances are that Natalie wants to chat with you when Barry set it up that way? It's most likely for you. Yeah, guys. kind of like you went from like a half court three pointer all the way to a slam dunk, right? Right. Because your shot percentage is so good 
when you have someone who Natalie trusts going to bat for you. So I highly encourage everyone, look through those secondary connections, find someone on the inside. And then the last question for you, Liz, is, is there anything else you might have in common with someone at Pixar? Anything else that's part of, part of your identity, part of who you are, that might bind you to an insider? Hmm. I mean, I am Mexican, so I don't know if that would have something to deal with. Yeah, totally. You could say, show me everyone who was part of like a Mexican student group, right? Mexican American. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's some people like that. Maybe you volunteer with Habitat for Humanity. There are some people who will work at Habitat or volunteer at Habitat. So basically the bottom line is there's always something that's going to tie you. And now, last question for you, Liz. This is like the grand finale, the big fireworks at the end of the show. Liz, given all the steps we've gone through together, finding your North Star, optimizing your keywords, if you really must work at Pixar, if that is the key to unlocking your dreams, at what point, Liz, did you give up in your search for a referral? I would probably, I don't know. I'm not the type to really give up unless I was hired or fired. So I would just keep persisting. <laughs> yes, I love yeah. that. The answer is never, which is you are a Spartan. Think about the history of Spartans, right? If you go back to ancient Greece, Spartans were these mythical warriors who never gave up, right? Who battled to the last, mi the last minute. And you are going to be the same way in your career. You have worked too hard, come too far, to give up at the walls of the fortress. Instead, you're going to find that way inside, get your foot in the door, and launch a career that you love. So Liz, for demonstrating that, for being a true Spartan, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Okay, so everyone, please send a little more love Liz's way, because she's just given us a tour de force of the way that you find a job here in 2022, which is you're not searching willy-nilly. You know where you belong, because you're talking to Spartans from day one. And then when you know where you want to be, you don't keep it locked in your head. You get it into keywords on your resume and your profile. And then finally, you're not stuck on the outside, sort of peering in the window, hoping to break in. Instead, you have someone on the inside going to bat for you, tearing down those castle walls, getting you on um, to the job that you love. Now, I'm going to take a bunch of questions for the next 10 minutes. So if you've got any questions whatsoever, please start putting those in the chat. If you want to talk about, hey, how do I ultimately you know, network my way to the referral? Or how do I get ready for my interviews? Or anything that's standing in your way, please put those in the chat right now. And as you do that, I'm going to give you three bonus goodies to get you on your way. So first of all, if you want to stay in touch with me and ask any questions after today's session, all you've got to do is connect with me on LinkedIn. Here's my profile. And I would love to stay in touch with any Spartans, both current and alumni. So that's number one. Number two, as a huge shout out to Carrie and Sandra and Anita and Kristen and Larissa and your amazing career team, you have access to the world's only LinkedIn course designed by LinkedIn insiders, all for free for your entire career, just by virtue of being a Spartan. And you can get access to that through the link that I just shared in the chat. And once you're in, you are in for life. And then third and finally, if you stay till the end of today's session, you will get free access to my brand new book all about LinkedIn, which you can see on Amazon right here. And to sweeten the deal, not only do you get free access, you can even get a free LinkedIn profile review using the link that I shared in the chat. So please, 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 if you want any of those goodies, use those links. And now, most importantly, let's take your questions. So let me come back to Sandra. Sandra, yeah, great. I know Thank a lot you. of questions are pouring in. What's yes. top of mind for you? Um, well, first, I just want to say uh, thank you to you for um, those great tips and strategies um, for students on how to optimize and navigate their job search. And then I also want to give a huge shout out to Liz for being such a great and awesome participant and such a trooper throughout the session. Um, we have been uh, having questions throughout the session, and so I'm going to pass it over to, we typically like to kind of take them in the order received, um, so I'm going to pass it over to Carrie and Kristen, who have been monitoring the chat for the student questions or attendees questions, and um, they'll go ahead and ask the questions to you, Jeremy, so you could go ahead and respond to those. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, um, Kristen, do you have a question? Or do you want me to start with something I have here? Carrie, why don't you take the first one and I'll have the next one. Okay, um, so it's a question about keywords. Um, I've been playing with keywords as per job descriptions, changing my resume every time, but I'm still getting rejections. What do you think my next step should be? Yeah, great question. So I'm gonna say two things. First of all, don't worry about changing your application or your resume for every single job. That can be a really inefficient process if you're applying for 100 jobs and everyone's got to be different. Instead, if you come back to that job scan process that we were talking about, what I actually recommend doing is not just scanning against one job, which over indexes on you know, a specific company in their lingo, but actually pasting in five, 10, or more job descriptions from across your industry. And what you will then see is the patterns across the industry start to rise to the top. So numerically, you'll see things with 10 or 20 listings across you know, Google, Apple, Facebook, et cetera. And that way, you don't have to build your resume every single time, but you can have one version for all of your product management jobs or all of your software development jobs that really nails the themes. So that's a way to be more efficient. But if you've done that and you're still not getting where you want to be, then I come back to that third and final step, which is recognize that here in 2022, the cat is out of the bag. A lot of students at a lot of schools know about keywords and optimization. But the one thing I can promise you that most students still do not do is they do not go the extra mile to reach out to alumni. And how do I know this? Well, I work at Khan Academy. And I can promise you that thousands of people are applying for every one of our jobs, but I almost never hear from students from my own alma mater asking for a referral. And so if you put yourself out there, whether it's for a really huge tech company or tiny startups, you are gonna get a massive edge just by having someone on the inside advocate for your candidacy. So if you're not getting where you wanna be, please, please, please don't stop only with an online application Go the extra mile, get that edge, and get your foot in the door. Great question. Thanks so much, Jeremy. So our we've got some really wonderful questions in yeah. the chat. Why don't we start with, um, with regards to people who have been, you know, doing this job search and maybe they're starting from a new state, um, are really kind of starting fresh. What are your recommendations on how they navigate their job search specifically on LinkedIn when they're starting from scratch in a new location? Yeah, absolutely. So the number one thing is, and I want to be a broken record, but I got to tell you, when I was a student, even as an undergrad and later as an MBA, I found that I and all my classmates neglected this first step at our own peril, which is we said, hey, everyone wants to be a consultant or everyone wants to be a product manager. Let's just do the same thing as our classmates. And here's the sad, depressing fact. Two or three years out of school, so many of us were looking for new jobs because we had chosen the job that was perfect for our friends and not for ourselves, not for our unique gifts. So before you spend any time on keywords or referrals or anything else, spend time doing your homework so you know where you belong because it will save you so much pain and suffering every step of the way. And then once you know where you belong, once you have that North Star clear in your vision, that's where you really got to double down. You know, I see so many LinkedIn profiles that say student at San Jose State, student at Santa Clara, student at Stanford. And the problem is, is for a recruiter, those are basically invisible profiles because no one's searching for generic students. Instead, they're searching for animators, producers, writers, um, visual artists. And so once you know what your North Star is, you've got to translate it into a clear vision of where you belong because otherwise recruiters cannot find you. Now, here's the dirty little secret of recruiters. As awesome as recruiters can be, it is not their job to find you a job. It is their job to fill the role for the company. So never forget who they work for, which means it is on your own shoulders to make it really easy for them to pick you and want you. Never outsource that. Never say it's up to my career team or up to my family or up to the recruiter. It is your job first and foremost to make it easy for them to find you, pick you and hire you. And if you can do that, you will be well on your way. Awesome question. Thank you for asking that, Kristen. 
you. So there's a question in the, the chat, Jeremy, about, you know, what if you really have no idea what your, your North Star is? And I'll, I'll plug the Career Center that if you are here and you're either a current student or you are um, within one year of graduation, you can meet with a career counselor. We can have this discussion with you to help you find your, your path and help give you some direction. But what's, what's your advice, Jeremy, if they just have no clue what their, uh, their North Star is? Yeah, such a good question. And I have to apologize. Liz is so amazing as a candidate because she's already done the heavy lifting of figuring out where she belongs. But I got to be honest, when I was in Liz's shoes as a junior in college, I had no clue what I was going to do with my life. So one other way you can use that alumni tool, which is the product that I worked on at LinkedIn, is you can actually scroll over to the right-hand side and say, hey, I'm currently studying psychology at San Jose State, but I know that I don't want to be a psychologist. What can I do with that degree? And if you click on that list, what you will discover is there are so many people who are coming out of the Spartan experience. And yeah, some of them are psychologists, but some are at Google and Apple and Meta and Santa Clara Unified. And by clicking on any of these things, you can get a sense of, whoa, there are so many different pathways for me as a psych major that I didn't even realize existed. So even if you feel totally lost, Number one, know that you're not alone. We've all been in the same boat before, myself, Evan, Zach, Zoe. And by reaching out to Evan, Zach, and Zoe, you can learn what's possible for you and then follow those footsteps. So please, please, please never feel stuck. There are so many Spartans out there who want to help you succeed because they've been down that same road. Okay, Jeremy, here's another question. Um, so how, how do you tailor your profile in the case of changing careers or changing your career focus? What's the best, best way to go about that? Yeah, so I'll start with that idea of job scan that we talked about before, which is you've got to understand the language of recruiters. Because again, recruiters, as much as they seem friendly, are not your friend. They're not there to help you. They're there to help the company. And so if you focus only on what you've done in the past, and that's irrelevant, recruiters are gonna completely pass over you. So what I did when I wanted to go from being a kindergarten teacher to a product marketer, is I learned what the keywords were and what the language was in that industry. And then I went back and I remarketed everything I had done. So I used to work for Teach for America. Instead of talking about teaching or pedagogy or curriculum, I talked about marketing campaigns. I talked about generating uh, massive increases in building the funnel, building the um, conversion rate of the people who are applying through the core. And by using that specific language from the world that I want to join, I was actually building a bridge from where I had been to where I want to be. So never get typecast in the past, never get stuck in your old role, always build a clear bridge that helps you get to where you want to be in the future. And you can do that through the power of language. Great question. Okay, I know we're at time. I know there are some awesome roundtables to come here. Um, Sandra, did you want to transition to the next session at this point? Um, sure. Um, is there one last maybe question, Carrie or Kristen, that you feel was a very common one that we'd like to ask of Jeremy, or are we ready to move on to the next part of the agenda? Carrie, you want to go ahead and choose one? Um, Sure. I was just trying to just scroll through here. Um, do we talk at all about, uh, do, do you, in your impression, do you feel like recruiters or hiring managers pay attention to minors? Mm. Um, because the student is curious because they have a, they were communication major and they also had a minor in psychology. And how important do you think that is that they include that information in their self-marketing? Yeah, such a good question. So let's come back to the two audiences that are critical. And I'm going to end with one bonus hack to give you really strong firepower as you start your career. So again, the two key audiences are the algorithm, whether on LinkedIn or the resume tracking system, and then also the human who's evaluating you, either the recruiter or the hiring manager. And by the way, the recruiter is the person who's just looking for talent. The hiring manager is your future boss, the person you're going to work for someday. And so when it comes to the algorithm, minors absolutely matter because anything on your profile matters, anything on your resume matters. So for example, let's say that you're doing a minor in computer software or computer science, even if your major is in psychology. Well, guess what? 
If computer science is an important keyword, including that minor on your profile, on your resume, will make it easier for the algorithm to find you. So that's awesome. But now, if I'm the hiring manager, and by the way, I am a hiring manager at Khan Academy where I run the marketing team, I will probably not spend a lot of time looking at your profile and every little bullet point. Instead, as humans often do, I'm coming away with a very general impression of who are you? Would you be a good fit? And so the number one thing you can do to shape that impression is to reach out directly to me and build a relationship, build some rapport that are going to get me excited about you. And how do you find hiring managers? Well, here's the final hack. If you come to LinkedIn and you plug in these two magic words, I'm hiring, what you will discover for the first time is that all of a sudden, there are all these people who are CEOs and founders and CMOs who are looking for your talent. And by the way, unlike recruiters who are mercenaries and just want to fill the role and then move on to something else, these are the people with massive skin in the game. Because if they hire someone awesome like yourself, you make their whole lives better. Whereas if they hire someone terrible, and I've been down that road, it can ruin your life. And so if you can reach out to someone like Pedro or Derna or Justin and say, hey, I saw that you're hiring for the marketing team at Bright Idea. Here's what I could do for you. That's more powerful than a thousand bullet points that I might never read. So when in doubt, build relationships, build rapport, build a bridge to where you want to be. And the best person to do that with is the hiring manager. So I want to thank you all for the amazing questions today. Thank you to Liz for being a rock star volunteer. Liz, I can tell you're going to go far in this world. And I can't wait to take my kids and see your Pixar movies a few years down the road. And in the meantime, a massive shout out to Carrie and Sandra and Kristen and Anita and everyone on the career team at San Jose State for making this session possible. And to all the Trojans, all the Spartans out there who are going to go so far in your careers from here to every adventure to come. So I wish you all tremendous success and a bright future ahead. Thank you all so much.